good morning, everybody, and welcome to this time of worship as we gather on this cold February morning. We light our Christ candle this morning. Our Christ candle is lit as a reminder of the light of Christ, which has been given to us, a light that drives out the darkness that can threaten our days. Candle is a symbol of God's love and presence with us now and always. May this light shine brightly in our lives, a light that clarifies and warns of danger, a light that guides us and calms us, a light to offer insight and hope. And we will now hear our chorus. <laughs> Worship is responsive. May God encircle us, keeping hope within and despair without. May God encircle us, keeping peace within and turmoil out. May God encircle us, keeping strength within and fear without. May we open ourselves to the spirit of life as we worship today. And we pray in unison. Strong and tender God, when our lives are wintry, you warm us with love. When our hearts are closed and cold, you melt our fears with hope. When our spirits are weary, you breathe encouragement. Cast out those things which cause us to feel separated and apart from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning from Voices United 394 moved by the gospel let us move and we will sing all three verses <laughs>
kids club. I hope you've had a good time getting back to school and seeing some of your friends again. I've got a story I'd like to tell you about today. It's about one of my favorite books called The Invisible String by Patrice Karst. This tells the story of two little children, the twins. They go to bed and there's a terrible thunderstorm and they're very frightened. So they go and get their mom. And they say they can't sleep all alone. They're too scared. So mom tells them about her. I've got one right here to show you. Oh, it's, it's got a knot in it. There we go. There it is. It's an invisible string. Well, no, you can't see it. It's invisible. It's invisible. Well, I won't tell you why it's invisible quite yet. But Patrice um, Hurst, in her book, tells the story of the invisible string that connects people. So the mother of the little twins tells them, you can go to bed in the middle of the storm and you're not really alone because I'm connected to you through an invisible string. As soon as we love someone, we are connected with them by an invisible string. Well, the kids were really interested in that, so they had a lot of questions. They said, well, what about our cat, Joe? Are we connected to Joe? Yep, invisible string to Joe. Well, what if I put on um, a diving outfit and went to the bottom of the ocean? You'd still be connected to me with an invisible string, said their mom. What if I went to the very top of Mount Everest? I'd still be connected. What if I went to the deepest, darkest jungle or went to a ballet in Paris? I'm still going to be connected. They thought for a moment and then one of the children said, well, what about Grandpa? He died and went to heaven. Are we still connected? And Mom said, absolutely. We're absolutely still connected to Grandpa in heaven. Whenever you love someone, you're connected with an invisible string. And it's invisible because love is invisible. But it doesn't go away. Even when someone's far, far away from us, we're still connected with an invisible string. <sighs> Twins felt much better. They went back to bed. Didn't matter about the storm. They knew that they were still connected and held with mom together with their string, held in love, and they had a wonderful sleep. They drifted off to sleep thinking of that whole network of strings, their, the friends that they held strings for, their cousins, their aunts and uncles and grandparents, and of all the strings that those people held and all the strings that their friends held for other friends. And they imagined the world as this huge, big network, all held together by invisible strings of love. And I think... That's a wonderful story for us to remember right now because we can't always be with the people we love right now. Maybe you're missing your grandparents and your cousins or aunts and uncles. Maybe you're missing children and grandchildren. Remember, we're all held with invisible strings. I have grandchildren in uh, Calgary. Every once in a while, I'll get a text or a message from them saying, Grandma, I'm holding your string today. Can you feel it? And I... I I can feel, I can feel that tugging on my heart, that invisible string. And we're also held on invisible strings by God. That's one of the strongest strings that we have. Every one of us connected to God with that invisible string of love. So as we go around this week, seeing other people, being careful about how we see other people and not seeing some other people, let's remember that we're all held together by invisible strings of love. And if you're missing someone, just remember that you're not really apart from them as long as you're connected by your invisible string of love. And maybe every once in a while tell someone, I've got your string and I'm holding you today. Have a good week. Our prayer for illumination, let us speak in unison. Oh God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear what you are saying to us and what your spirit is saying to our church today. Amen. And our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, 
they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought him to all who were sick or possessed of demons. The whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. He would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Here ends the reading of God's word. And we will now hear our anthem. We're going to be performing a hymn to freedom today and just a little background on uh, this anthem. Uh, that Oscar Peterson is the composer of uh, Hymn to Freedom. He was um, a Canadian uh, musician, and this composition was written in 1962. It was embraced worldwide for uh, an anthem for the civil rights movement. And uh, the words are very simple, but uh, poignant, and uh, they express hope, unity, and peace for all and dignity for all mankind. Welcome to our home, Jesus. Here's our living room. We had new hardwood floors put in last year and got new furniture. Lovely, says Jesus. And we walked on. We show him our kitchen. And here's the kitchen, Jesus. Just had it painted last summer and updated all the appliances. Nice color, he says. And here's the bathroom. We updated the pile tiles and put in new countertop. That's great, said Jesus. Now let's go to the basement, he says. Oh no, we think. We had no intentions of showing Jesus our basement. Things lurk in the basement. The basement is not on the house tour. In the gate basement, we keep things we would rather not see. Things we don't want to think about. Things we don't want to talk about. Things we don't want to show Jesus or anyone even ourselves. No, not the basement, Jesus. We say, we don't need to go down there. Yes, we do, he says. We'll go down there together. I'll go with you, he said. You won't be alone. So together, let's go. We opened the door and we walked down the stairs. And there it was, that frenzied, unclean spirit of all our deepest fears. And Jesus said, what do you see now? And I tell him, we see all of our fears. Fears that steal our sleep at night. Fear that takes the joy out of living each day. Fears of loneliness. 
fears of illness, fears of failure, fears of financial failure, fear of failure, fear of pandemic, fear of worry about when life will ever be normal again, fear of death, fear of fear itself. We feel our chest tighten as our fears and a dark shadow settle over us. And the unclean spirit of all our deepest fears looked at Jesus and said, what do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, Holy One of God. And Jesus stared back at that demon of our fears and said, be silent, come out. And all our fears dissolved. And Jesus, standing by our side, looked at us, smiled. What do you see now? He asked. And we tell him we see creativity courage. We see hope and new possibilities that we'd never seen before. And Jesus said, it's yours. It's your gift from me. We walk on further into the basement and they're smirking at us from behind the furnace. It's the spirit of our guilt. Guilt of things said. Guilt of things not said. Of things that were done. Of things that were left undone. The unclean spirit of all our guilt looks at us and then looks at Jesus and says, what do you have to do with, with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, O Holy One of God. And Jesus spoke to it and said, be silent and come out. And immediately it fled. All that guilt, some that had been hiding there for oh so long, gone. Jesus looked at us and smiled and said, look around, what do you see now? We looked around and saw that all our guilt was gone and in its place was forgiveness, reconciliation and grace. And Jesus said, it's yours, my gift. We walk on and then we see it watching us from behind the hot water tank, that green eyed demon of all our envy, envy of other people, envy of their jobs, envy of their homes, their holidays, their cars, their stability, their relationship. And that unclean, frenzied spirit of all our envy looked at Jesus and said, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, O Holy One of God. And Jesus said, be silent, come out. And it's gone, gone. Jesus smiles and we feel the burden of our resentments, envy and jealousies lift from us. How are you feeling? Jesus asks. We tell him our feelings of contentment, the joy of contentment, the joy of knowing really all we have is as much as we need. We have enough. We tell him of our new feelings of peace and of well-being. They're yours. A gift from me, he said. We walk on together, and when all the clean spirits that had lurked so long have been banished, we walk upstairs again. And Jesus says, how are you feeling? And we say we are feeling well and whole and touched by joy. He smiles at us warmly and looks deeply into our eyes. Enjoy these, for they are my gifts. I came that you might live life and live it with abundance. And then Jesus pointed outside the house to the bushes thick with unclean spirits of this world. We saw anger and hatred, resentment, revenge, regret. We saw fear and envy, addiction, depression, loneliness. Tomorrow, said Jesus, we go out there. We begin our job of healing the world together. Jesus is still the authority in our world to heal just as he was so long ago in Capernaum. He can banish the demons and the unclean spirits that destroy our peace, that can rob of us of joy and fill us with fear and anxiety. May we remember to turn to him again in times of prayer and in our day-to-day -day living. May we remember to walk hand in hand with him and allow him to banish our unclean spirits. Jesus' hope for us is that we might be healed. Fear and anxiety cast out, banished. 
that we may be restored to wholeness and wellness, that we may experience abundance of hope and joy, and then healed and whole may we go, taking him with us as we live life abundantly and spread his message of love and of healing in this world as we go out and cast out the demons of hurt and fear and loneliness that lurk in this world around us. May we go hand in hand as we help Jesus in his ministry in this world. Amen. Our hymn of reflection this morning is from Voices United, number 620, Silent, Frenzied, Unclean Spirit. join together now in a time of prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. We come to you today, O oh Jesus, in need of healing. Search out our pain, restore our hope, remove our fear, bring us to a place of peace. Heal us, O oh Jesus. Let us forgive as we are forgiven. Dispel all memories of guilt and bring us to a place of joy. Heal us, O oh Jesus, soften our anxiety, lighten the burden of our envies, bring us to a place of contentment where we are happy with all you have already given us. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Bless all who are in darkness, be with the despairing, support the depressed, comfort the suicidal, Strengthen those who grieve and those who feel alone or forgotten. Cast out all that which keeps us from being whole and well, O Christ. Come, O Holy Present, and walk with us as we move from this time of worship. We ask all this in and through the strong name of Jesus, our Christ. And hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gifts to support the ongoing work of the church continue, even these days of stay-at-home orders. Giving via par, by your regular envelopes, mailed in or dropped off at the church, or through Canada Helps online, are all ways you can continue to support the church. Thank you for your givings. And now let us seek God's blessing on our offerings. Let's pray. We respond to your, to your word to us in so many ways, O oh God, with givings in the form of par, with checks, but also with the gifts of ourselves as we live seeking to follow you. Bless these gifts and through them, may your work in this world continue. Amen. I have had an opportunity over the last week or so to reach out to a few of you by phone um, and it's wonderful. I'm not sure when we'll get a chance to actually meet face to face, so it's nice to have the opportunity to introduce myself to some of you. If you would like to be in touch with me, feel free to email me at minister at westdaleunitedchurch.ca, I believe it is, dot com. Um, it's on the bulletin that has been emailed to you, and my phone number is also on that bulletin if you would like to, for any reason, be in touch. You don't need to have a reason, just call and introduce yourself. I'd love to speak with you. Uh, we also have a list of items that our mission and outreach team are looking for. They are looking for snacks, granola bars, cookies, things individually packaged, razors, gloves and mitts, shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste, toothbrushes, tampons, shaving cream, or deodorant. If you can help by donating any of those items, you can drop them off at the church. Just please give Tanya a call first so she knows to look for you and um, can pick up whatever you are leaving at the door and get it in and into the donation box. And our closing hymn today, number 278, In the Quiet Curve of Evening. we go forth from here. May God wrap you in love. May God cradle you in hope. And may God embrace you with peace today and always. Amen and amen.
Hi. Hope you all had a great week. Well, we got into some trouble last week. We only had pictures of dogs. Now everyone is sending us pictures of cats. So if you could forward any photos that you might have of your little kitties to the email below, that would be much appreciated. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.